I, uh, I had a bit of some network issues. I completely forgot to plug in my secondary Ethernet card, so I had absolutely no network, which wasn't a great way to start the stream. And uh, now I think we're working, though. Okay, awesome. So everyone can hear me. Go, Gidra, go, indeed. So I've downloaded the tools. Um, I'm just going to open Process Hacker for a bit of fun and see if it makes any outbound connections. I'm not paranoid, but it would be funny. So just going to do that. Um, not really sure about a batch file. That seems a bit old school. But uh, whatever. Let's just run it. Wow, that is even a lot of stuff. Okay. So the um, the application I've opened to analyze is Nekus, which I was looking at this morning. So I felt it would be kind of uh, a good test. It's government. I'm surprised it's compatible with the. It's not compatible with the AS400. <laughs> so we're just gonna have a little look at Nekus in it. Okay, that dragon thingy that just popped up is going to get very annoying. Okay. So we've got our headers here. Oh, that's quite nice. So it actually parses the P header, which Ida does not do. And it's that's been much to my annoyance. I've always had to read the header manually or use other software. So you can actually see the values here. Uh, if we find... Where is it? I think it's... Can I get the DOS? Yes, here we go. We have the DOS header, so I see all the values. We've got the NT header here. That's kind of cool. Now, I'm not sure about, about Radari. I actually don't use it, but I would be interested to know if Radari actually can do this. I know Ida cannot. But uh, being able to parse the P header values is incredibly useful, especially if you've got a packed executable or the import table is trashed or whatever. So I quite like that. So far, not a fan of the, I don't really know how to describe it, the layout, I guess, kind of, it looks a bit 90s, but it's from the NSA, so I don't know what to expect. Oh. So it looks like it's doing side-by-side -side decompilation, which is like we've got our assembly on this side, and then it's basically trying to estimate what the C code for that assembly would look like here on the right, which is pretty cool. Ida does the same thing, except you can only have one or the other. You can't have them side-by-side. -side. So that I'm already liking. Looks a bit 90, Ida is far worse. Uh, I feel like Ida looks a little better, but I guess it's uh, preferences. So, oh, that's pretty cool. It looks like if you uh, if you select things within the the sort of reverse engineered C window, it actually shows what they match up to in the assembly, which is something Ida also doesn't do, as far as I'm aware. So I can see that this check here where it's checking if this value is null, is this CMP um, instruction here, which is, that's going to be pretty useful. I can see the, basically, whatever I click seems to come up on the right, and it also works the other way as well, so that's kind of cool. I am wondering how I get to the graph mode, and if there is one, though, that's kind of my favorite view in IDA, is the layout where it puts, uh, it kind of, separates up the throw uh the flow into graphs don't know what any of this does create a snapshot okay let's see what's on the context menu instruction info wow that is uh quite extensive not sure if I would use this, but uh, it has some nice information. Let's try it on uh, the CMP. Okay, so it says what flags are set, the byte length, the instruction bytes, the mask. 
we've even got the opcode and address size. Okay, that's quite useful if you want to go into how instructions actually work at a processor level. I can't see myself actually using this, but it's a cool feature. Um, patch instruction, that's, uh, that's something I use in IDA a lot. If you've got, say, a check for if, um, like let's say if it's checking, if the debugger is running, you can just right click uh, patch instruction and then you can flip the, um, I probably shouldn't have done it on that instruction, I should do it on this. So if this was some kind of debugger check, I could actually flip the instruction. Instead of a JNZ, it would be a JZ, which would do the opposite of whatever it's programmed to do. So if it's quitting the application, if a debugger is running, it's now not going to quit if my debugger is running. So that's quite a nice feature. I think Ida has it, Rodari probably has it too, but I would be disappointed if it was not there. And yeah, it is coded in Java. I noticed a lot of people in the chat are saying that. Yeah, not a fan of Java software either. In fact, I had to install Java right before running this uh, stream because I don't have it on any of my machines because, well, why? But uh, as far as Java software goes, it's not terrible. So it's already winning. So create function. I assume that's, we, yeah, we've already got a function created, so let's not run that. That would be silly. Uh, stack depth change. That's quite a useful feature. Sometimes if the stack is uh, corrupted or it gets the stack pointer wrong, um, it can basically break the entire graph view. That's something I have happened a lot in IDA and it's a lot harder to actually fix. So I'm assuming that's what that does. Set register values. What does this do? FF. Okay, so assume AC equals, a, oh, I see what that's doing. So if I were to do that here, set register value to 1337. Okay, so it's going to assume ECX equals 1337. Then I assume if at any point ECX was uh, changed in kind of uh, a way that references the previous value. So if it was incremented, I assume that would then tell me the incremented value. In fact, I'm gonna see if I can find some code which would do something like that. And then we can test out that theory. Oh God, what is this? This is the, oh, that's just some random undefined bytes. Do not want that. I need something, some kind of function that does math. Oh, it's the local variables. Okay, I see. So we can go into the local variables. I wonder if we can rename them. Not seeing any option. Uh, maybe in the other graph. Let's see if we can find something to rename. I assume there is a rename option, but I'm probably being dumb. Uh, tell me in the chat if you see it or if you figure out how to do that. Um, see if I can find some kind of math. All right, sub ESP, let's see. Oh, we actually have it here. Ah, I can probably do it here. Let's see. Set register value, one, two, three, seven. Okay, that's not worked at all. So I would have assumed it would tell me now that ESP is 1337 minus 2C, but it seems not to have worked. Uh, I assume that's what that would do. Maybe I'm wrong, but either way, being able to see the, what the register values are would be quite helpful. In the decompile window, you can change the name. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Rename. Uh, Okay, so it's there. Oh, and it's it's renamed it in the assembly window as well. And I assume in the entire application, which is kind of cool. Wonder if we can do the same with our data functions. That's the import table. I do not want that. I meant data, not our data. Okay, so data. It doesn't seem to give us the option to, oh, is that what it? Nope. 
I think it only gives us the option to rename in the C side of things, unless I'm being really dumb, which is quite likely. Let's try again. Um, oh, I renamed the data section by accident. Okay, that's not great. Uh, undefined for, S not seeing any rename option. Maybe I'm just dumb. Edit label. Um, oh, add label. I wonder what that does. Okay, there we go. That's quite useful. I wonder if that would be found wherever it's referenced, which I don't know how to do yet. So we can't, oh, I've just found out how to do that. Okay, find use of undefined for. Oh dear God, this looks very, very 90s. So it doesn't transfer the label across, but I assume if, it re if I rename it, it will. RCE already, no, I'm, it's Java, so it basically is an RCE. You don't have to look for RCEs in it. And uh, thank you for the sub, not night here. So in my quest to rename variables, the search continues. I can set the color. Let's go bright pink. Okay, that's beautiful. Um, I feel like I'm doing something really wrong here. Or I'm just not an intuitive person. Oh, wow. So apparently there is an RC in Jidra, Gidra, whatever you pronounce it as, I don't actually know. Come on. That's just adding comments, essentially. That's not what I need. Um, comments, maybe, no, that's, okay, so there's a lot of comment options and then there's the label option, which is basically the same as comments. I don't really get what the purpose of that is, but whatever. Um, still not finding a rename option though. Anyone in the chat have any ideas? Because I am pretty stuck right now. Hmm. I feel like I've just learned how to reverse engineer and I'm just bad at everything. Okay, so none has any ideas. Let's move on. But we definitely can rename variables in the the decompile, which is great. We can also retype them, which is something you can do in either. I wonder what uh, if it supports Windows types. Uh, let's use a Windows type. Okay, so it has Windows types. I assume it has Linux types. Yeah, uh, that's not a right type. Okay, apparently it does not have those types. Okay. It has something like that. Oh, there we go. UN32T, so it does have those kind of types. Awesome, so we've got Linux and Windows type. un 8 yeah, I forgot it was the T. I'm a complete noob. I'm not Linux in quite a while. So we've got our Linux types and Windows types supported, which is kind of cool. We've obviously got the Windows uh, header format supported, which is great. Uh, E LFA new, so we can see the offset to the P header. That's sweet. Let's see if we can find the graph view we were looking for. That looks like a graph. Oh dear God, that is a graph, but it's I can't graph the P header. That would be dumb. Uh, let's pick this function. Okay, that is pretty nice. So that is a lot like the IDA graph format. In fact, it's pretty much exactly the same uh layout scheme it looks like it's got kind of the similar color scheme as well the only difference is the title bar looks more like a windows 98 title bar than whatever id uses i think it's just a green box but that's pretty sweet only downside i'm seeing is i don't think there's an option to alternate between the two i think i just have to open this as a second window which isn't a problem with three monitors, but I'm only using one for the stream for obvious reasons. So that's pretty cool. 
I wonder if we can actually rename from this window. That would be useful. Oh, wow, that's a lot more options. What is right? Mm. Jump to xrefs, that's basically the exact same wording that IDA has, but it's a cool feature I love. If you click it, you can see everywhere something is used, and then you can jump to wherever that thing is used. But I'm still not finding a rename option, probably because I'm dumb. Uh, function, no, it's not going to be under there. I totally should have gone to RSA and sat in the talk, then I would understand what the hell I'm doing. Oh, script manager, interesting. Okay, so it has built-in scripting, that's nice. Can I write my own script? Oh, I can. Uh, which Python is it? I have no idea where that's going to run. That's the only problem. I'm guessing maybe this console, which I can't actually seem to expand because it's locked. There we go. OK, cool. So I can do Python scripts. That's something you can do in either. You can reference things from the assembly, uh, run decryptors, whatever. That's a pretty useful feature. Uh, one thing I like one complaint I do have is I like to turn off the uh, bytecodes for the instructions. I would prefer if that was off by default, but I'm sure there's an option to do that somewhere, which I will spend years digging for. So I'm going to skip that part. Memory map. Okay, that's pretty standard feature, but very useful. What else have we got in here? So it's mostly scripting stuff in the windows, uh, select. Okay, standard. Search program text. Can I search for instructions? Uh, I can, that is nice. So Ida has something like this, but uh, it's split up, so you have three different search functions. You have uh, text, binary, and uh, I think it's immediates or something. And the text takes forever, whereas that was pretty fast to find what I needed. And I can choose what I search through, which is pretty sweet. I can even search for comments if I want, so that's quite useful. Uh, what else can we find? Go to next instruction, go to next data. Okay, those are pretty standard features. We can jump to the nearest data block, instruction block, undefined block, whatever L stands for. The hover doesn't seem to be working. Label, okay. And I'm guessing that's function. Okay, sweet. So, so far I'm quite liking this. It doesn't seem as intuitive as I hoped, but that might be that I'm just an idiot, so uh that's up for other people to decide okay what else we got load pdv okay nice one thing does it just do disassembly that is the thing i was just about to question is i my assumption would be that this does not do debugging or does not have a debug interface and I'm actually just going to look for that now. Because that's a pretty standard uh, problem is IDA is the only decent disassembler that has a debug interface. Radari, I think you can add one, but you have to do some weird programming. Like, basically, you have to write it as a plugin. It's not supported by default. So I'm not seeing any debug options, which is kind of as expected. So if you're debugging, you're still going to have to be with Ollie or WinDebug or something and then just cross-reference with this, I'm guessing. Although it was said that there is a, uh, there's an API, so you can probably link it up to a debugger and someone will write how to do that at some point. 
Uh, I don't see any built-in options for that, but that's kind of expected. The help menu is amazing. I don't do help menus. Can you can you not tell? Oh, API help there. That's cool. Yeah, the G the GUI is not the best. Oh, it's gonna open it in the browser, great. More zero days. Okay. Ah, the problem is the API is Java, so by default it sucks. I'm definitely not going to be writing Java code ever in my life, so I'm hoping that maybe you can do it with Python. Maybe there's a Python API. I don't think there is, but they should definitely add that. Not a fan of writing Java code. It runs Python 2.7. Yeah, I figured the... Uh, the print message I did wouldn't have run in Python 3 because they uh, they like brackets for some reason. All right, let's look at some, how do I actually find the entry point? I'm guessing, it'll, yeah, it clicks from exports, nice. And I've clicked off it again. Come on, go back. Okay. So already I'm noticing the decompiler is actually, um, it's figuring out the types a lot easier because obviously this is Windows malware, so it's going to be using Windows types rather than generic C types. So it's actually, it's figuring out the C types pretty well. Like we've got a H module here, which is a Windows type. I'm assuming it's deriving that from whatever function that is passed to which I can't actually seem to find there. Must be a references option or something. Huh, I can't see any usage of that in here. That is one thing that IDA has that maybe this doesn't have is if you are to hover over a variable, it'll say everywhere that is used. Um, see if there's any I can see used in here. So I'm pretty blind. Um, no, so it doesn't do that. That would be a nice addition, is whenever I hover over this uh, ph var 5, it would show me every place in here where that var is used. I assume there's like a, a slow way to do that, maybe using find. Yeah, so I'm, you're just basically just going to have to go through and find each instance which is not very intuitive but whatever okay what else can i look at um does it do click into functions yes sweet so I actually think the uh, the way it's parsing the C code is actually looking a lot uh, more accurate than what I would usually see. The only way to tell the true accuracy would be to write something in C and see how close uh, this comes to it. But I can't be bothered the only programming today. Eventually, I will find out how to rename variables outside of the decompiler window, but that is for another day. I would quite like to play with the symbols loading, but uh, I can't do that with Nekus because it's malware. So I'm going to try and add a Windows binary and see if it will fetch the symbols automatically. You should just add a notepad. That seems like an easy thing to do. You can highlight repeating occurrences with the middle mouse button. Okay, let's give that a go. Ah, sweet. So there it is. You can actually do that. You just need to click the middle mouse rather than left click. So that's pretty useful. Right, let's get to our notepad. Yeah, the, uh, the casting to char pointers 
uh, for a null is yeah, that doesn't make any sense, but that is also something a problem I have with the IDA decompiler too. One thing I would like to know is oh it it does do huh. That's pretty cool. So I want to see if it will do resource files because that's, oh, it does, nice. So it parses resource files. That's again a fallback of, I, uh, not a fallback, a failure of IDA is you can't actually parse a Windows resource files in it. You have to use a, uh, usually I get a PE Explorer or something, but uh, that is a feature I sorely miss in IDA. All right. I don't think it's loaded symbols. No, let's try manually load them. Ah, oh, it's going to make me create a folder for it. Uh, let's get the Microsoft symbol server URL. I can't actually remember it off my heart, so I'm going to Google it even though I've written it out a million times. Okay, there it is. I still won't remember it, but whatever. Let's see if that works. Nice. So far, IDA 7.2's output looks way better. Can I compare them on the same binary? Uh, I don't have IDA installed on this machine. I think I have an IDA machine somewhere, so I can maybe fire that up. Uh, this might be it. Uh, the only problem is I can only access that through RDP, so I'd have to open up an RDP window. Ah, whatever. Let's do that. while it's loading the symbols, which is apparently taking forever. So any questions so far while we're waiting for this to load up? Oh dear, that's not good. apparently having trouble with the PDB file. Oh no, Java error messages. Please don't show me that. Maybe it loaded some of it. Nope. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, not sure why. Not an error I want to debug. Anything that's Java is not for me. I think... Uh, let's do some side-by-side -side, uh, IDA and... Uh, whatever this is called, I've forgotten already. If I find my VM IP, that would be helpful. Right. This is probably gonna take a little while to refresh because it's been frozen for a while. Um, I'm gonna find an, I guess, notepad again, and then compare them side by side. I really did not like that PDB file, but whatever. Okay, now to see if I can get both of these things on the same screen, that's probably going to be a bit tricky. Eh, there we go. Um, now I'm probably going to have to switch the, uh, the VM focus to allow me to do this. It's going to be a bit tricky, but give me a second. 
Oh dear god, that looks awful, but whatever. Okay. Thanks for the sub, um, Jafango. Right, this is going to show my desktop, so I'm going to hide the start bar so you can't all see what weird stuff I'm running. That's not going to work, is it? Uh, whatever. I really hate staring my desktop on screens. I always feel like I'm leaking info, but whatever. Okay, so we got Ida up now. Let's go to, I guess, the entry point. And then I'm going to run the decompiler, which is here. Okay, then I'm going to do the same in here, which is... Okay. It's not really a very good scroll. Okay, so it looks pretty much the same. Um not sure where this interlocked compare exchange is coming from. I'm guessing uh, because it's naturally an atomic operation, it wrap, Ida will wrap it in this, whereas here, I would assume that is just this, which is not at atomic. We've got a do while loop instead of while true, which is um, interesting. Only problem here is I don't know what the original code uses, so we can't actually say which one is right. Um, I actually think the, uh, the coloring on this is a little better. Like I do is basically everything is just blue except for imports that are pink. This kind of color codes thing is you got your variables, uh, your data variables here, which, uh, whatever color that is, I actually don't know. You've got your local variables, which are some kind of goldy yellow. You got your immediates, which are green. I quite like that compared to everything is just blue, although you can change that, I believe, in either, but it takes some setting up. How to change the font? Uh, in which one? I'm going to bring this back up unless anyone else wants me to add, compare anything else side by side. Yeah, I am, I am kind of liking the look of the layout of this more. Definitely, uh, I think my biggest problem here is obviously going to be the debugger, so I'm still going to end up using IDA, but I can definitely see myself using this for any kind of static analysis. Just, I'll probably have to use IDA for my main job, because if I need to debug, and then I'm just going to have to port comments between IDA and this, which is going to be a pain. So unless this can pass IDA databases, I'm probably going to be using IDA. What am I using paint for? I'm an artist, sir. How dare you? Bunch of stuff I have no idea what this is, but uh, let's look for the font options, which I would have assumed would be in tools, but it's not. Maybe edit? Nope. Uh, where would the font options be? Where would I be if I was a font option? I have no idea, but I would assume you can change the font just like you can with Ida. Alright, so I'm actually going to read the chat for a bit. So does anyone have any questions or anything they want me to do while I've got Ida and uh, Dragon thingy open?
Uh, no, don't download from the GitHub. I think it's still just a, um, it's some kind of template, I think, with, uh, with options of, let me just check. I'm just going to Google it. Because last I checked the GitHub, it was basically just README files, and they didn't actually have the source yet. It's the same right now as the, it's just README files, whereas the actual page is this. And then your download link is here. I will paste that in the chat in case anyone doesn't want to type it out. But yeah, the GitHub still doesn't have the source, which is probably intentional. Um, I was looking forwards to not looking at Java code, so it's fine by me. How is the memory usage? That's a good question, actually. Um, it's Java, so it's probably horrible, but whatever. Oh, dear God. <laughs> so we're using 1.19 gigabyte of memory. But that's reserved, so that might just be because it detected I have high RAM. All of the uh, the sub applications seem to be using significantly less RAM. But uh, I actually can't tell if it's reserved or not. I don't know how to tell that. Should be in the command line somewhere, I'm guessing. No, but I'm assuming that is reserved. Are keybinds working for me? I can set a keybind using F4, but that only works once. Did you, didn't you mean Alt F4 or something? I've actually not tried the keybinds or if there are any. Control Alt F. Okay, cool. QAnon brought you here. Amazing. Great. So is QAnon uh, sending people to watch me getting hacked by the NSA in real time? Exciting. Do I think they have a backdoor? Like, honestly, no. Um, my thinking is they're just trying to make people better at verse engineering. This is something GCHQ did is they started releasing a bunch of tools that are for basically anyone interested in hacking. And I think their plan was that people would use the tools to learn to get better, which would mean better applicants for them. Because obviously they need to hire people. So they making people better in general at the skill gives them better people to hire. So that would be my guess, is they're basically just releasing this tool to get people interested in reverse engineering, um maybe make them better because there's actually as far as i'm aware there is no uh disassembler with the decompiler that is freely available so this would be the first that has been made freely available which is incredibly useful so i would guess that it's basically just to make people better and that way they can have some better applicants in the future if it was backdoored and it was designed to hack everyone that would work once and then no one would trust the NSA again. So I would go with it not being backdoored other than the fact that it's Java, which in itself is a backdoor. Yeah, so someone said that CodeChef is incredible. Yeah, that's a pretty cool, uh, good tool that GCHQ released. It does a bunch of uh, stuff all from in your web browser. It's very useful. Yeah, man. I've not been keeping up with the comments at all. I do think the source is supposed to be coming out. I read it's open source. They haven't released it yet, but I think the source will be released at some point. At least that's my understanding. R2 has a free decompiler. I do not believe that for a second, but I guess it's possible. Who is GCHQ? GCHQ is the British version of the NSA.
But yeah, this is a good decompiler. As far as uh, ASM to C decompilers go, this is pretty decent. You know, I've looked for one of these for a while that wasn't Ida and never did actually get around to finding it. I've like I've tried um Radari, but it's it's just not intuitive. They didn't have an official user interface until recently, and then they they made one because everyone forced them to, but it hasn't had uh, kind of long enough to mature yet. Whereas Ida had an interface from the start, and then they built on that interface, so it actually works. Seeing that uh, hover dialogue that just came up, I don't know what actually, oh, that triggered it. That hover dialogue is basically straight out of Ida. It looks exactly the same, but it's pretty useful, so I'll give that one a pass. Is Ida bigger than all? Yeah. Uh, in my personal opinion, Ida is the best toolkit out there. You can't get better than Ida Pro. The only issue is the full kit, I think, is it's somewhere around ten to twenty thousand dollars a year. So it's not in most people's price range. And by most people I mean anybody. Pronounce J is it Jidra? I have no idea how it's pronounced. I'm not even gonna pretend I know. Uh, why'd you have to message me in the middle of the stream? Yeah, just mute that. <laughs> yeah, not having to manually decompile code is definitely a big plus. That was something I always did because C is my first programming language. So I would always be there translating the assembly to C manually so that I could read it better. And obviously now it's just like you can jump straight in and it'll even work side by side. What do I think about Red Deck? I have no idea what that is. And thanks for the sub, Motivate3. Some parts of the source code are included in the source zip. Uh, that's probably something I should have checked. Is the source code actually in the folder? Oh dear God, there's compiled Java applications. I think the source uh, parts that are in here might just be GPL code that they have to release. I don't know if the actual source for the application is in there. I would have to check and I can't actually read Java anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Can I decompile an EXE which I already have the source to? Yeah, that is actually something I was going to do. I'm going to go find something I, I wrote recently that isn't sensitive, and then I'm going to bring it up. Uh, I think feed processor might do. No, that's too big. Uh, Hmm. I need to find something to uh, that I've compiled recently. Oh, I know one of the capture the malware challenges I did. Let's see if I can find. Uh... I can't actually find even where I put them, which is not great. 
Ah, there we go. So I'm gonna drop plain text three uh three in there. Should do the trick. Let's just let's drop this in. I don't know if this has enough code to actually make a good comparison, but we'll see. Uh, it doesn't really have much. I Ideally, I need something with some more advanced loops, but I don't actually have any code to hand that I think I can share. Let's see if I can find something else in the challenges. Live overflow is yoinking my content. What does what does that mean, Teddies? Pathfish is is a great application. Uh, although a good trick is to just use um, one of the kind of hipster hypervisors like KVM or some shit. And that way you don't have to worry about VM detection because they don't detect those very well. I mean, yeah, but I, I know he means he's taking my content, but in what in what sense? Like he's tweeting it or he's actually like stealing it because I doubt he would do that. Okay, I found something I can decrypt. It's the fake ransomware I wrote for one of the challenges. Should be perfect. Live Overflow is basically screening my stream on their YouTube account. Oh, that's fine. I don't mind that at all. In fact, it's more exposure. And I'm also a pretty big fan of Live Overflow. I do watch his videos. Oh, that dragon thing is gonna annoy me. All right, quit it with the PDB stuff. Oh dear God, that's not great. Okay, there we go. Um, I don't have Visual Studio installed on this, so if I print the code in text, it's not going to be as pretty, but I guess it's going to have to do. Actually, wait, I lie. I'm just going to print screen it because I'm lazy. Now let's open my favorite graphics editing application. There we go. So I might need to make that a little bit bigger. Oh dear, that's not gone well. I really need a bigger screen, but if I do that on stream, it will just like, no one will be able to see anything. The text will be too small. Okay, so first difference I can see is it's detected the loop as do while rather than while. Um, that's not a big issue. In fact, it's probably easier to read it that way. Um, other than that, the code is pretty much exactly the same. That is hex instead of decimal, but that's pretty standard. Um, has it, it's gotten most of the types correct. Uh, I have no idea what that is. 
I'm assuming this is some kind of initialization code, which we wouldn't see here anyway, so I'm going to ignore that. It's inlining the string quite nicely, which I do like. Instead of uh, just putting the variable name in and having to click on it to see the string, I can actually see the string text straight in the disassembly, which is awesome. Uh, what is... Yeah, it's pretty accurate, I'd say. The extra stuff you're seeing is just stack checks, which the compiler puts in automatically. So everything between about here and here is this code here. Um, it has, I think, inlined the function, which is also fine. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty decent. Apparently there's an option to disable the dragon animation. Oh my god, I hope so. That is going to annoy me by the third time. I could full screen decompiler, yeah, that would be a good idea. How do I actually do that though? Ah, there we go. It's much better. So this is one thing I like about software, except I can never uh, remember how to get the thingy back in once you pull it out of the window. Usually there's a little bar here you can click, but uh, that's not working. So that's just going to live there now. Setting bytes to OXCC. Yeah, that's probably debug code. I've not really looked in depth into it. But yeah, it's not a bad decompiler, and I do like the syntax highlighting. That's very nice. It's something you have to set manually in IDRA, I believe. Function graph topology window. Uh, let's see when we find that. Um, I know there's one of the current function, but I don't know if there's going to be an all function one. I know there is an IDA, but it's pretty difficult to implement. Not seeing it there. Uh, Function call graph. Oh dear God, that's awful. Uh, so it does have a function call graph, but it looks really weird. But I can move it, which is quite useful. That's something you can't do with either, and it makes it really hard to read when you've got a ton of calls. So yeah, so far I'm actually, I'm liking this more than I thought I would, which says something because I am incredibly negative. <laughs> uh, what else have we got that we haven't tried? What does this do? Nothing. Okay, cool. Program trees. Oh, so these are our, just our uh, sidebar things. Register manager. Oh, so that's for when we set the register values earlier. I assume they would show up in here somewhere. Data type manager. Ah, that's that. Am I a fan of government agencies now? <laughs> oh my god. Of course, someone's got to ask that question. No. Still not a huge fan. Actually, I lie. I'm indifferent. I always have been. I did, yeah, I did work with the government before, not the US government, the British government. So I don't hate intelligence agencies and I'm not overly suspicious of them. But uh, yeah, the US is kind of a different ball game. Could you test out the inverted color mode edit tool? Tool options. Uh, I'm not seeing it here. Ah, there we go. Uh, what am I looking for? I don't see inverted color mode. It's got to be a color option somewhere. Oh, what decompile options do we have? Eliminate unreachable code. That's quite useful. Ignore unimplemented instructions. Okay. 
display. Oh, you can change the colors, that's nice. All options are searchable. Ah, that's pretty nice. Mm. Okay. The very first menu. I'm not seeing the option you tell me of, unless I'm really blind. Uh. Malware tech are a spook. I'm not a spook. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded being, but I'm definitely not. Edit, tool options. That's what I'm doing. Edit, tool options, tool. There's no option for that. Ah, so I might be looking at the wrong options. Where would I click to get the other options though? Uh. Let's try with the decompiler, wherever I actually left that. Not in there either. Minimize code browser. Do you mean in like main application options like here? Ah, that's why I couldn't find it. Now I have to restart. Okay, let's do that. Oh, dear God. This looks like some uh, 90s uh, Linux stuff. That's actually, for me, that's harder on my eyes than the light version. Although it does look more hackery, so maybe that's the selling point there. How did I do that? Um, so to change the color mode, you need to go into the first window, which is this. Go to edit, tool options, tool, and then there's a use inverted colors mode which now means i can't actually see the check in the box it's very fake uh, vague but that uh that was thanks to who was in the chat let me scroll up a bit the rush uh the rusher was the one who pointed out that feature so thank you uh the only Downside is I now can't read any of the checkboxes. What does this do? Windows, okay. They might need to fix that because that's pretty much unreadable now. And yeah, I am critical of the 90s, not because I hated the 90s, because it's not the 90s anymore. That's more why. Ah, come back. I don't know what I changed or if anything actually changed, but I cannot read any of the message boxes, which is really not helpful. Oh, I like that layout a bit more. Yeah, I think I could do the dark mode if it wasn't for this bright yellow bit. That kind of burns my eyes. If maybe I changed that to a slightly darker color, I could probably get used to this. Yeah, definitely needs a theme engine. <laughs> so, uh, although, I mean, you can kind of make your own theme to an extent with the color options, but I guess that's not what you were thinking of. Uh, 
Right, so I ha actually haven't eaten yet today, so I'm probably going to head off in 10, 20 minutes to eat. So if anyone has any more questions or things they'd like me to try, uh, throw them in the chat right now. I'm actually reading the chat this time. Oh yeah, with the source release, there will definitely be some kind of theme for it made. I kind of want to turn it back now because this is burning my eyes. <laughs> like, none of this is readable. <laughs> oh dear God. Uh, it was there, wasn't it? There we go. Okay, they might need to fix that, I think. new reversing stream when uh i don't know like i kind of discontinued the reversing streams temporarily because uh i was going through a lot of stress in life and i just i couldn't commit to that on top of everything else so uh i will bring them back it's likely to be after the case maybe earlier if i feel better but there will be more reversing streams i promise you well assuming i don't randomly die tomorrow but Otherwise, yeah, they're going to come up uh, back after the case. Can you increase the font size or UI size? I assume so. Except I can't actually read the options, which really doesn't help. Okay, it's not there. Hmm. I actually not come across any font options, so maybe you can't. I don't know. When is my case? Uh, sometime in June, I think. But that that won't actually that wouldn't be the end of the entire case. I believe the trial would like that's the trial start date, and it would probably go on for a few days, weeks, maybe months. And thank you, Anjali. Has anyone pulled Jidra into Ida yet? So Ida actually doesn't really do Java at all. It can only look at the bytecode, so probably no real point in doing that. It's not actually going to reverse it. It's just going to look silly. Can I see the decompiler for some more esoteric arches? Uh, I actually don't think I have any non x86 or x64 code. Um, I can't remember the last time I did any ARM stuff, so I, I would love to, but I don't really have anything to hand to look at. But I imagine it probably works quite well for those as well. Uh, I'm trying to think if I actually have anything I could throw in there quickly. I think I do on this machine, sorry. Apparently there are font options, but it takes a while to find them. Okay. I would say a lot of stuff in this is not where I expect it would be, so it does take some digging around to to find it. Uh, yeah, the answer to your question is Alf is what, however I pronounce it, Sudderhog92 something says. That's basically the answer, is the system is not set up for things like this. That's why I'm kind of in a possible position. Okay, so any last questions before I go get food? One thing I'm hoping they add, if it's not already added, is the graph mode here. If I bring back up my IDA window, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. 
So in IDA, what you can do is you can press spacebar to switch between graph and text mode, which I really like. Uh, doesn't seem to be such thing in um, Jidra, Jidra, whatever it's pronounced. I'd love to see that implemented. That's pretty useful. What am I going to eat? It is steak. All right, so there's no more questions that I'm seeing that I've missed. So I'm going to take a break, get some food. I'm going to do a more full write-up on this, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I will do a blog post, definitely. But I kind of wanted to do a stream just for old time's sake. So uh, the NSA advisor who gave the talk says it's Jidra. That's horrible. Damn Americans. Oh, well. On that note, uh, thank you for joining the stream. It's been great as usual. And uh, maybe I'll get a few more streams in. But they will definitely come back after the uh, the case is over.